Tonight is really a special occasion for me because the last time I saw this exhibition was in DePaul University in Chicago. And how that came about was simply I had a very energetic intern working with me in the Doll in Dublin. And uh, she knew and heard me, I suppose, uh, calling, making calls uh, to fundraise for uh, the Writer Centre here. And uh, she uh, suggested that she would organise a fundraising event in the Paul University in Chicago. So I contacted the people that I knew in Chicago, um, Kieran being one, obviously, a very special friend of mine. He took photographs of my wedding back in 1986, and we retained that contact. A man called Dave Cahill, Black Dave Cahill. There were two famous people in Chicago called Black Dave and Red Dave, two Cahills. And also uh, John Leahy, who was from Marcus Street and a great distolman, huge connection, and Eugene Moriarty. And it's interesting that Eugene is back now here in the stole, and he's a member of the board here of the centre. So we did a major fundraiser in DePaul University. Uh, Rebecca did a great job, and all of the team did a very good job. And Kieran then suggested that he would have an exhibition of the great writers of North Kerry. And we had very distinguished audience there that night, some people from the arts world as well, and they were really enthralled with the exhibition, and especially uh, they knew obviously people like John B. Keane, Brendan Kennedy, Brian McMahon, uh, but also the other people involved. And the, black, the fact that they were black and white, uh, it kind of distinguished the, the photography and they were all, I suppose, complimenting uh, Kieran on the standard and the quality of the photography on the night. So it was a special occasion. And also, we took over. Billy Keane was with me. Billy was chairman of uh, the centre at the time. I was chairperson of the fundraising committee. Uh, so we took uh, Ken Rice, who is now the director of the Irish Chamber Orchestra, and uh, Deborah Collins, who is probably the top pianist in the country, they were with us on our team. And over there we had a man called John O'Connell, uh, who was a, who had his own band in Chicago. And uh, John actually is a brother of Patricia O'Connell's, who works here in the center at this moment of time. So it's extraordinary coincidences, that connection between that event in Chicago and the Writer Center, which is up and running and hugely successful, let me say, because of people like Carol Trant and the board and so on. Uh, so it's a great coincidence that we are here tonight um, celebrating this exhibition uh, with Kieran um, and also showing that connection with that major event in Chicago. And could I say as well that Rebecca Ryan became the chief fundraiser for DePaul University afterwards. Now, I'm delighted as well that this woman here, Kathy May Lyons, is featured in the exhibition because very little is known about this woman, Kathy May. She went to school with my mother, they were in the same class, and she was writing poetry when she was going to Drum Club National School. And she was an exceptional poet, but like so many more people, never got the opportunity to publish or to really express themselves publicly. There is a whole volume of poetry there somewhere that hopefully, if we could get our hands on, we could publish it. But you were fascinated by her face and so on, Kieran, so I you might like to say just a few words about her. I think the, the fact like that she was just, she, she wasn't a tall lady, she was a shorter lady, and she was like very quiet and very reserved and wouldn't really say a lot or wouldn't, you know, wouldn't talk out. But her poetry was romantic and it was like, it was beautiful and it was short and it was like, it wasn't, overpowering. Yeah, she was very much into nature. She was a nature poet, very much, I suppose, uh, in the mould of Woodsworth. Okay. Uh, she was that type of poet. And also she was blind, so her, she had very poor eyesight. Uh, so that she expressed that fact too, that she couldn't see, a bit like Milton. Yes, yes. Um, so she was quite extraordinary. Very unusual lady, but again, like she was just, she was so sweet and she was so kind to me anyway. I was only young fellow at the time, so it was kind of it was a different kind of a thing, you know. And 
for me to take a photograph for was, I felt it was an honor. Yeah. But the significance of your exhibition is that you're featuring people who have been forgotten about. Absolutely. And, and that's and why it's so we're important. We're talking about the two great poets from, from Canoeing alone. That um, you have uh, Maureen Beasley and Kathy May, and two people that are hardly recognized in the, in the poetry world. And I think it's a shame, really and truly, but we have the pictures to prove Absolutely. Our results, you know. And I think there's a huge obligation on Writers Week and every other literary body here in the Stone and Art Kerry uh, to remember these people at all times. You have to nurture the present but you have to remember the past as well, and they deserve to be remembered. Yes, and I abso absolutely agree with you. I think that we're, you're forgetting about the older people, but you must also remember the young people coming in, um, that we need to recognize them, and we need to kind of bring them into the, bring, up, bring them into the, the center, and, and let's hear them, and let's, you know, let's see them. Very much so. You know, so I think it's a, an important thing. I'm delighted also, Kieran, that you featured Sean McCarthy in, in your exhibition because uh, Sean McCarthy is possibly one of the best ballad writers, not only in Kerry but in the country. And his ballads are sung all over the world. Uh, songs like Shanna Golden, Red Hair Mary, Step It Out Mary. Mary. They're all classics. Yes. And it's great that Sean is. Uh, recognized and acknowledged among the pantheon uh, of the great North Kerry writers that you have featured in here. Yeah, happy that you mentioned that because you have Kathy May Lyons, you have Sean McCarthy, and you have Maureen Beasley, all from a very short kind of space area in Fenui. And I think it was very important at the time because they were all, they were all connected together but in different ways. Uh, I think that Sean McCarthy, um, you know, capturing him like this, he happened to be in the boys' school. And the boys' school, you wouldn't uh, do any smoking these days, but in those times you could. And I think that the fact that the smoke was coming out of the pipe, I really enjoyed capturing him like that. And a very down to earth and nature loving person, really and truly, you know. And it's worth remembering too that, like John B. Keen, um, Sean McCarthy was a pupil of Brian McMahon's. And also, he was a mentor of Maureen Beasley. He encouraged Maureen to write oh, yes, yes, yes. because he saw the talent Maureen had. Uh, and so brought he, it out. And brought it out. And his songs were recorded by all the top ballad groups in the country. And he was very much part of the folk revival in England in the 60s. And um, he encouraged Alice Taylor as Actually, well. Actually, he heard most of it in the States as well. I mean, you, you, you know, you'd hear it all over the world. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was hearing it in Chicago. He was still kicking around good in Fenoo at that time. Well, very much so. Yeah. And he had major influence on in Alice Taylor, the, the great writer, and uh, she would always credit Sean with uh, encouraging her to yeah. write initially. And actually, when he moved to, I think it was North Carolina, he moved to uh, again, another lovely area in America, and it was very natural for him to be able to continue his writing there. And it was good. And I was glad to have him in Chicago. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, well actually, Jimmy, this is a great woman we have here with us. This is Nora Relihan, the first lady to act in the Abbey Theatre in Dublin from the Stroll in County Kerry, along with Kevin Donovan, who had a news agency here in town. And again, a very important lady for Writers Week, as, as you know, as you're well aware of. Yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. Nora was very much involved at the beginning of Writers Week, together with John B, together with Brian McMahon, Brendan Kennelly, Seamus Wilmot, um, Danaher, uh, and others. But Nora was one of the driving forces and uh, one of the main women behind it. And she was for years, she was chairperson, president of Writers. Beautiful Street, lady. Uh, and a great actress. Yes. And uh, John B would always recognize the fact that she was so important in the first side she was, I think, Mina Glavin. That's right. Uh, but she really made that play, and she had a great presence on the stage. She took it off. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. So, but also, she got 
me on the stage. I acted in the Buds of Bally Bunny on and she directed it in the previous year in a play called The Patsy. Myself and Joe Murphy, that's where Joe met his entrance onto the stage and he's still on the stage. Funny enough, she was a big part of our family life as well because she introduced my dad and myself to the stage as well in the pantomime in the stall one time, oh, yeah, a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so Nora is responsible for a lot and she's still very interested in drama and interested in Writers Week. and uh, Very much so. And she's a great woman. Well, she's so. missed here tonight, great, you know. Very much so. And again, thank you for uh, including her in your exhibition. No problem, no problem. My pleasure. Absolutely. Yes. One of my favourite teachers growing up was Brian McMahon and Tord Glass in the uh, Skull Rails in the Madonna in the Stole, Jimmy. Uh, another staunch writer from the Stole. What a wonderful man. Yeah, he was exceptional. And Brian actually introduced the concept of the workshop for to Ireland. He went to America, lectured in various universities, and was a huge name and continues to be uh, in academic circles. But he was a wonderful short story writer. He was up there with the likes of O'Connor and Marty and others. Uh, he was very much associated as well with the Abbey and, would you believe, kind of with Kotori Kulan, which led to the chieftains. Okay. So Brian has had a huge impact in not only literature, but also on drama. I in wonder, was he, in, was he in Chicago in DePaul by any chance? <laughs> in fact, that we brought him there afterwards, uh, you know? Well, uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but uh, also, Brian was a great broadcaster as well. And uh, he had a program called The Ballad Maker Saturday Night. And uh, he was a huge figure on Irish television. When Gay Burden wanted something different, he always called him Brian and John B. Come on, he Come to the stroll to get and talent. both of them were on together in one night, and it was really electrifying to see both of them on there. And you'd be so proud that you knew Absolutely. these men. And we're very lucky. All of us here tonight are very lucky that we grew up in a town where we had these two giants of literature that were there, accessible to us, that we could talk to and meet them on the street, and uh, take their advice. Well, even to be taught by them instead of it's. A, it's a huge thing in itself, you know, just a local teacher at the time, like us, like we were only what? Six, well, seven, eight, nine, whatever it was that age well, uh, My connection with Brian and school is I went to John Pluck School and there was a, a, a league on in the stall, primary school league, between the various, the Glam, the Ashes, That's right, the Borough, the, the Country. So Brian allowed me to play with Killer Crent <laughs> and we won. So you got I won the upper hand. <laughs> my first big win in my football career. Okay, thank you. And okay, so here we are with Brendan Kennelly, uh, two brothers very famous from the Bally Longford area. Um, Paddy, who wrote the book uh, Sausages for Tuesday, and Brendan, of course, which is superior in, in his writings and uh, a legend of his own times, Jimmy. Uh, very much so, and he started writing very young. Actually, uh, his mentor was the great Con Houlihan, and he had a, a paper, a local paper in Castle Island called The Taxpayer's News, but also he used to publish uh, poetry in it. And Brendan sent him a number of poems, and he didn't get any response back from Con, uh, but then one day he got a letter back from Con, and Con said, you are now making the right mistakes. <laughs> so that launched Brendan at the particular time. Uh, but again, Brendan went to school in, in Belly Longford, where his teacher was the great Johnny Welch, another great footballer. Then in Tarbert, Miss McKenna, where he studied French. And uh, she had a very open type of school where she fostered creativity and so on, and yeah. independent thinking. And uh, Brendan left at a very young age for Trinity College. And then he, as he said himself, they couldn't understand his accent or he couldn't understand theirs. So he left after a year about and went to England and walked and then came back. And of course, uh, became one of the, the, the prominent people in Trinity. Yeah. 
uh, after the years, professor of English and so forth. But if John B is the, I suppose, uh, the playwright of the people, uh, Brendan, they describe him as the bard of Ireland, but he's certainly the poet of the people. And um, he's left us a great legacy of poetry. And the great thing about Brendan's poetry is that it's all based on very simple occurrences uh, in the area of Barry Longford yes. um, in Dublin. But his poetry in Barry Longford is very, very significant. It's a wonderful poem about this Loch Abbey graveyard, uh, where no, no doubt he'll be laid in the future, and also Carrigal Five Castle and local characters that inspired him uh, over the years. And of course, he learned so much by listening to people. He was a great listener, and he would advise you to be a good listener. Yes, a yes, lot of people yes, are yes. not, but he was. And that's where he got certain impressions from people, and he kind of then translated that into words and poetry. And he always said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. So that's how he kind of uh, connected himself with God and with religion nature. Yeah. through words. Yes. Uh, but he was uh, very much, I suppose, he really understood the rhythm of uh, the people of North Kerry, that uh, connection with nature, uh, with landscape, and I suppose with the folklore of uh, Kerry itself, yes, and with the living culture. Uh, with, um, Brennan certainly was one of the great poets. He was up there with, I suppose, certainly with Heaney, with Yeats, um, and with so many more uh, great poets that we yes, produce yes, here yes. in Ireland. National and, and renowned, absolutely. Well, the big one would be Patrick Kavanagh, and they were both very good friends as well. Yes. They both had good times in Dublin together at one stage. They partied well. They did, they partied <laughs> very well. Uh, so Brendan has left us a great legacy, and the great thing about Bre Brendan, he always recited a poem called uh, Nish Tartanari by Raftery and Fella, and uh, there are four lines in the verse. Stambinshin mahasavi gartlaad morwina the motion each day, each day, this vimmerish oak. If ever I'm back again in the midst of my people, uh, my age, reduces and I'm young again or something to that effect. Oh, and when good. Brendan came back to Listowel, uh, to Orisvera, first of all the Listowel lodged in Orisvera, certainly he received, you know, he was, he was rejuvenated. Well from, yes. Very yes, much so. Yeah. Well he was rejuvenated and it added so much to the quality of his life. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, uh, it's great anyway that John B. obviously would have to be featured in any exhibition of Irish writers, not only the store writers, but he has made an extraordinary impact on Irish literature, and he's referred to as a playwright of the people. He is indeed, and the fact that, 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 that Billy's dad, as I would say, you know, he's like, he's, he's a giant amongst the legends of the store, really and truly. But I always remembered him from the bar and leaning on the bar counter and he'd always be listening to the stories of the guys sitting at the counter. And he'd get a lot of good information from that, I'd say. Well, absolutely. Uh, but John B. rode right up to his death almost. And um, he had a fantastic output of, of plays, of novels, of poetry, yeah. of short stories. Uh, so he was reading one of the key people in Irish literature and recognise as such. And whenever the Abbey, or indeed the Gaiety, uh, when they put on a Jambi play, they're always guaranteed full houses, all the time. Well, when he started back in the, in the earlier times, when they had Sive, and they carried Sive on the Munster region, and they had to win out the Munster region to get on to the national finals and stuff like that, that was when he really became into his own, I think, for myself, that he kind of, he mushroomed from there on. And like, they won the national event that year, and of course it was a huge, huge well, thing for the stall and for... Absolutely, and uh, both Brian and Eamon Kelly started off uh, amateur drama in the stall in the 40s. It had been there beforehand, uh, but they probably gave it more focus. 
Yes. And John B, I suppose, was lucky that that platform was there when he started writing plays, and especially when he had this whole drama group, I suppose, to produce Psyb at that particular time. And he, there was a great squad of actors there at the time as well. Talented people. You used to always walk the square every day. He'd pass around our house every day and you'd always say hello to him and he'd walk on his way and he'd be thinking or writing and maybe in his head, I'm not sure about which one. But it was, again, it was just a lovely event. Yeah, and also he was a, he was a great footballer as well. And when he was asked uh, how would he like to be remembered, he said, as the individual who scored the winning point in the North Kerry oh. Intermediate <laughs> Championship against the war sometime in the early 50s. Yes. All right. All right, and here we are with uh, Maureen Beasley, uh, very famous, one of the triangle from Fenwick, Jimmy, a poetess in her own life, and a naturalist and a pleasant lady. And just a pleasure to be around. Well, absolutely, and uh, she was a very good poet, inspired by Sean McCarthy, and also she owes a lot too to David Brown, who edited her poetry and ensured that it was published. But if you want to go back and, I suppose, get an understanding of the way life was in the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, go to Marnie's poetry, uh, because she really, I suppose, um, you know, represented that in words and She verse. was a naturalist, uh, really very truly, so. kept things very simple. And she connected in with kind of work in the bog, uh, in the meadow, in the garden, uh, the rambling room. houses, and the wren at that particular time. But she really captured the atmosphere of rural Ireland, rural Kerry at that particular time. And she was very much part of Writers Week, as you all know, here this evening. And people used to come to Writers Week to meet her. And she started the whole Poets' Corner, I understand. And that still continues. Yes, very And nice. she would have been very proud of Sonia, her uh, granddaughter, who was a poet as well, and had huge potential. But unfortunately, uh, she Sonia right. passed away before her time. Yeah. Um, but Maureen has left a great legacy. We do have a nice documentary in Fenug on her. Uh, we videoed it, the great Dylan Byron videoed it before she passed away, so at least we have that in our memory and we have our literature. But Maureen Beasley will remain forever uh, in the whole, the uh, well, in our minds, you know, yes. in our memory, because she was such a, a wonderful woman, a great giver, and she just loved life. And I spent many a great afternoon in her home, actually, and playing with her son, Tashin. And, you know, he's another famous character, Very rare to go for Fenwick. Absolutely. So look, uh, Kieran, this has been a wonderful exhibition and congratulations again. Thank you. All the way from Chicago to the Stoll. And also, I suppose it's really gratifying that the money that we collected in Chicago uh, went to make this building, this museum, a reality. Absolutely. So your exhibition in Chicago has served a purpose. And it serves a purpose here as well the, tonight because it's honouring so many people who are here with us in the room this evening. And they're back in the stall, Jimmy. Most of these people are back here where, where they should be, really. Absolutely. Truly. So, like everything else, uh, people are responsible for this exhibition. Yourself, obviously, uh, for producing the material in such a very, very professional fashion. Black and white always gives a, a a better story, I think, than colour. And then for Jim and Liz Dunn, uh, who had, I suppose, uh, the vision to ensure that this happened, and Sharon here in Writers Week uh, for helping to facilitate that. And of course, for our sponsors, uh, the Arts Council, who are very important, uh, Fault Ireland, and Kerry County Council. So look, again, Thank you to everybody. It's been a great evening, a wonderful evening, great evening for Kieran, and hopefully we'll see this exhibition again in the future. So thank you. <laughs>